This is the fifth segment of the fifth lecture in the course Mobile Source Air Toxics. We're going to cover risk calculations, and these are human health risk calculations. I will simplify and do in a nutshell what it is that we need to do to compute human health risks. We'll have cancer and non-cancer risks. Let's start with the non-cancer. We compute non-cancer risk based on the hazard quotient, and we can compute them in three manners as you see here. The hazard quotient must be related to a factor that if you are above that factor, there is a severe health effect, and if you are below, not as much. And because there are so many chemicals, we cannot add all the hazardous effect to the total body. We need to be organ-specific. So there are certain chemicals that will impact the liver, some will impact the brain, some will impact reproductive capacity. So we need to analyze those. Here, as you can see, this is the average daily dose, and this is the refer reference dose. So this is for specific chemicals. We will have a reference dose for each one of the chemicals, and it must be organ-specific. We also have, for direct inhalation, we have air concentration divided by a reference concentration that will cause a health effect. You can also do this based on different effects to compute the hazard quotient. Now let's do the cancer risk calculations. In the cancer risk calculation, it will always be something related to a dose times a cancer slope factor. I'm just writing here as toxicity, but this will be a CSF, cancer slope factor. The base formulation here, which is represented below here, is then multiplied by the exposure duration divided the body weight and the average time. We could also add here the exposure frequency. Now, when we're computing cancer risk, we compute the lifetime average daily dose, the LADD. The code will do that for us. And we see the dose, exposure duration, exposure frequency, divided by the average time times 365, because we're doing here the exposure frequency. And the cancer risk then will be the lifetime average dose times the cancer slope factor. Once we have each one of the chemicals compute the cancer risk, we must sum all of them to see the total risk. This is how it is done in the Human Health Risk Assessment Protocol from the US EPA, the HHREP. I am not fond of this approach. I did not recommend this approach. I recommended the approach I'm going to present in the next slide. I think it is a more reliable approach because I can have, if I add all the risk, I can have risks that will be above a probability of having cancer above one. And then this is not realistic. We cannot have probability above one. So what I like is this approach here. Total risks equals one minus Remember our friend here, e to the minus summation of all the risks. And now you see on this curve here that I will add as many risks as I wish, and I will never cross the probability 1. This is actually the Crumps formula. I did not invent this formula. I just like it to be the approach we use. And this will be part of your assignment for this week. I presented this in the last segment. This is just an explanation. It's here for your reference. And it has a little bit more detail on the recommended toxicity references that we need to use. So first we look at one. If we don't have that chemical, we don't have all the chemicals. We go to two, three, and four. Thank you very much. If you have any questions, please feel free to email.